Hey guys, so here is the kit that we're looking at. The little unloader kit that goes on top of your air compressor for your Series 60. And I know DD15 has this as well, and I'm pretty sure other ones do. But this is specific. This video is specific to the Series 60 uh, 2008 9 that's on the uh, Freightliner Century. Okay, I'm going to show you this little kit. That's the part number. It's a new kit. Inside, you're going to have a few items, instructions, parts. Literally, the way you take it out is the way you put it all back together. Okay, so that's what you have. You have your spring, you've got some seals, you have a gasket, you've got the uh, grease, you've got new screws, and again, you've got the instructions right here, so I'm going to show you that really quick. Instructions. Okay, pretty easy to do. Literally, the way you remove it is the way you reinstall it. So if you're having issues with your air compressor building air, and your air compressor, they're not cheap. You can get them rebuilt. That's obviously one option. The other option is, again, try this little kit. It's worked for me on a number of times. And again, there we go. So there's your instructions. There's your little parts bag. There's your part number. And I'll show you the uh, air compressor in a second, but I just want to give you a quick little right, overview. So here's the Series 60. There is your Series 60 air compressor. And if you can see, I'm going to try and zoom in on that. That is where that little port goes, okay? That little valve that we're going to install right now. And again, this is just simply an option when your compressor isn't building air and you really need to accelerate or rev the engine up to build air. Okay, so I'm gonna get you a little, that's a side view. Let's take a look up here from the top. Okay, and that's exactly where the port goes. Okay, the little valve. Okay, I'm gonna show you right now when it's assembled and just before I actually install it. All right, covered. Okay, you do get two new screws, so make sure you use those and dispose of the old ones. They have a little bit of Loctite already on there. And again, there's your cover. There's the top part. I just cleaned it up a little bit just for the sake of this video. Okay, and here's your gasket. Now make sure your gasket is put on there correctly. Can you put it on the wrong way? Uh, I'm pretty sure somebody would find a way to do so, okay? Anyway, it only goes on one way. Double check that when you're actually installing it onto the top of the air compressor head, which I believe that is gonna be the correct way. Now, so that you're not losing it and fumbling around and dropping it, you can use a little bit of, uh, I to use this, a little bit of, uh, gasket shellac compound just really lets it stick on there doesn't affect it in any way it just lets it stick on there so when you're actually turning this upside down to install it okay the two are not separate so again i want to show you that just before i install it i'm going to go ahead and get started in the process of installing it i'll show you the video i'll start it we'll build some air we'll test it a few times and we'll make sure that everything functions properly. again it does come with the grease lube okay use that it works really well it, a little bit goes a long way and again you're just going to lubricate the outside o-ring and again you would lubricate the inside o-ring okay? because the inside piston okay it's going to simply go up and down and you don't want it to rip you don't want it to tear so just add a little bit of lubricant around inside okay so now we've actually installed everything that we that came in our kit and again it's literally step by step the way you remove it is the way you install it okay you've got the two new screws there now i think they're torqued down I'll double check that in a second, but again, that is the side view, and there is the top. Okay, so now everything's installed. We're gonna go ahead and fire up our truck. Obviously, we've got a low air indicator letting us know, hey, guess what? We're low on air. So let's go ahead and fire this up, make sure we're in neutral. Let's see how it builds air. And just pretty much awaiting it. It should take maybe about two to three minutes before we actually get our full air you know, up to its proper limits. But as you can see already, we've got the primary air tank. There we go, primary air tank is starting to build. Then your secondary, sometimes they follow together or usually one will go first. And then the second one will start to, start to go from there. So as you can see, looks like it's building pretty good. Customers tell me that when he was driving, or actually not driving while he's actually working, so when he gets to the yard, he's got a little bit of a trailer, or gets to a stop sign, the needles were dropping. So that could be, again, maybe the loader or the compressor was failing, but that little kit that we installed, it's actually a great solution rather than replacing your entire air compressor. Again, based on how old the compressor is, in this case, it's only about three years old, so it's not that old. I'm guessing just that spring and those parts were just kind of getting a little worn out. I mean, the guy, this particular truck, he puts a lot of miles on the truck on a normal basis. So I'm gonna attribute that more to wear and tear 
than just uh, an old bad air compressor. So again, as you can see right now, we're about 80 PSI on the primary. And once that typically gets to about 100, the secondary tank, which is down right there with the motor S, that one should start building air right away. Okay, so again, usually one gets to 100, and then the next one will start to rise up and get to its, uh, its limit. Again, we're just keeping it at idle, nothing major. We don't, you know, you can accelerate if you like or use your cruise control to increase a little bit faster. But at this point, again, I just wanna see how it functions. I'm not here to try and uh, break any world records as far as building air. So as you can see there, my secondary tank's now climbing. We're at 40 PSI and working our way to 60 and so on and so forth. So once it purges, it gets to about maybe 130. That's when you hear the purge. Chances are, it's you know we're pretty good, but obviously a good road test is the best way to figure out if, uh, if what we did worked. So after this, I'm gonna do a quick little road test. I'm gonna, you know, smash on the brake pedal there a couple times, let it drop, let it pick up, let it work a couple times. So, okay, so good. See, we're already 100 at one, 60, almost at 70 on the other, and we are building here. So as you can see, we're at about 120, slowly building our way or building our way to about 130 PSI. Now this particular truck has 992,000 miles. The air compressor has been replaced, I believe once or twice. The first time was rebuilt, didn't last very long. The second time was replaced with a factory Detroit from the dealer. I mean, it wasn't replaced at the dealer, but it was purchased at the dealer. As you can see, it's at 130, 120 PSI, which is good. And again, his next service is gonna be just over a million miles. And this guy does his service about every 20,000. He's not a local guy. He does go out from California or from LA to Fresno, Vegas, stuff like that. So as you can see, 120 PSI, that's good. It did purge. And at this point, I'm going to take it on the road. I'm going to see how it performs, and uh, we'll cut it loose. 